Hello and thanks for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this series of videos, we're talking about Acumatica 2021 R1, a series of new features. And in this video, we're going to focus on some new financial features that have come into this version. But before we get started, let's do a recap of all of the new financial features that are in Acumatica 2021 R1. So we have a video for company groups and you can find that video in our 2021 playlist. So company groups are designed to give you the ability to group separate companies within Acumatica and group them together so that you can provide vendor and customer visibility. So take a look at that video. Additionally, now when you install Acumatica Fresh, the financial dashboards are provided in the core product. You won't have to create them from scratch. The automation workflow engine uh, that we've shown in other videos has now been extended to the financial screens. In Acumatica, there's an enhanced credit card settlement process. If you used authorize.net, you won't be able to show that today, but that is a new feature that's coming into 2021 R1. The ability to synchronize your tax periods with your financial periods instead of having them separately configured. And also now you can show tax exemptions at the document level. We'll also talk about where Acumatica is going from a multi-company standpoint and some of the new enhancements that are here now that have come in the previous versions and that we should expect in the future. So regarding the financial dashboards in the core product, you can see here, we've logged into Acumatica and we're taking a look at the customer view. But if we go down to the dashboard, this is our sales demo site, we look at finance, there are a few financial dashboards that will be coming out of the box. So this one is the controller view, which gives you bird's eye view into cash on hand, cash required, average days to pay, open accounts receivable, uh, your aging details. And also you can see some of the customers that have overdue balances and a chart of your cash position. Now, this comes out of the box, but you can come in here and you could design and make changes. Maybe you want to have a customer filter here or a vendor filter or a bank account filter or specifically for cash position. So that's the controller dashboard. We take a look at the AP AR clerk, for that matter. This is more specific to accounts receivables. Again, you may add a customer parameter here so that you can filter by customer. But you can see average days to pay, orders to invoice. A lot of this stuff can be covered by your workflow, but keep in mind you can drill in to see these orders to invoice or the 37 invoices that are overdue by 90 days. Continuing on, we take a look at our AP clerk. And it's similar. It shows purchasing trends. And it shows bills to process, bills to pay, bills to approve. Assuming you're using the approval process in Acumatica, you have it configured. So let's talk about cross-company sales. So in Acumatica 2020 R2, features were added to allow you to do cross-company sales from an accounts receivable to an accounts payable basis. So for example, if you invoiced a specific customer and that customer was linked to one of your companies that was configured in Acumatica, Acumatica could make the counter accounts payable bill. So that was added in 2020 R2, and we have a video to show how that works. In 2021 R1, you now can sell goods with the distribution module in Acumatica and have it create the contra invoices. So for example, let's say we create a purchase order to a vendor, and that vendor is linked to one of our sister companies. We have the ability to create the sales order on the other company, and then once those goods are received, we can also create the shipments. And again, we have a video for that. Please look out for that video. 
And you can see here, re-invoicing and selling goods from a related warehouse. These are planned features for Acumatica. So to get started, let's take a look at the multi-company infrastructure. So at the top of the screen, you can see what we define as an instance. So over the years, Acumatic has changed some of this terminology over the last three, four years to make it easier to have multiple companies. So an instance is the URL. It's at the top of the screen. It's the URL that you sign into Acumatica. Brings up your login page. The tenant is individual separate companies at that instance. And they are visible through a company dropdown when you log in to Acumatica. They're also visible at the top of the screen. You see here, Revision 2 products. You see them there too. And then within a tenant that you log into, you can have multiple companies. And underneath those companies, you can have multiple branches. So that's the main structure in the way Acumatica handles instances, tenants, as well as companies and branches. Now within Acumatica, the ability to do business between companies under the tenant, we have a video for this to show how you can exchange information. You can import consolidation information from one tenant to another. And then when we talk about multi-company, there's a number of other videos that detail how to exchange transactions between different companies. So the next feature we're going to talk about is within our financial screen, such as bills or invoices. So if we create a brand new bill and we'll give it an invoice number, pick the vendor and we'll add an item here and save it. So one of the things you may notice here is we have another button and that button is related to the most basic actions we might do next in our workflow for this bill. So in the past, all of these options were located in the action menu with the exception of the hold, which was a checkbox here. Remove hold is part of our preference here. So as a default in this company, if we create a bill, it's on hold. But as we click and we remove the hold here, you can now see different options, different logical steps here. And under the actions menu, again, you can see some of the enabled items that are enabled because of the current status that we're in. Now to put this in perspective, if we go to our customization menu and we show the diagram and we maximize it, what you can see here is based on the current status, the status is currently open, you can see the different types of options that we can do. And if we zoom out, you can see the entire flow and how this all works. So when we're in balance state, we have the ability to put it back on hold. We have the ability to pre-release it or release it. And you can see the different flows that will occur. So if we, for example, put it back on hold, it'll go back to this status up here. And this is all configurable. So if you'd like, you can go into Customize Workflow and make changes. If you check out our other videos regarding workflows, you'll see we've done examples in the past through the distribution module. But now in Acumatica, you have the ability to reconfigure your workflows in the financial documents as well. So this gives a lot of other capabilities that weren't available previously. For example, the ability to, based on conditions on your document, to maybe show some of these options or maybe gray out and disable some of these options. Or maybe even add a brand new action that's available only based on certain conditions. And the conditions don't just have to be the status. You can make conditions based on any field essentially in the document. So, and how complex you want it to be depends on the level of customization you want to create. So that's financial workflows. Additionally, what's been added to Acumatica 2021 R1 is under our banking module 
in the past, the ability to create new transactions, of course, was always there. You can create a new cash entry. We create cash transactions when we don't want to involve a customer or a vendor. We're simply creating a transaction into the bank account. So for example, let's say we have some sort of funds. Let's say we got a um, some sort of rebate or incentive check in the mail. So we would come in here and we would decide what account we're putting it into. And if it's something we wanted to deposit, of course, we would choose our undeposited funds as an account. Maybe it's a incentive check and we're going to deposit it along with all our other customer checks. And under our entry type, we choose an entry type that was to reflect our revenue. Maybe it's an incentive here. And we'd give it some sort of reference number. This is an optional field that you can put on there. And we put the amount. So let's say, for example, the amount is $50. So we could, again, with the financial workflow, we can remove the hold and release this. And what's new is we now have the ability to deposit this. The previous versions, Acumatica wouldn't allow you to deposit a cash entry. So if we go to banking and we go to a new bank deposit, we'll choose our checking account that we're going to deposit to. Give it a reference for the deposit. And now if we click add payments, you can now see in addition to other customer checks that would show up here, and you can always put your date back if you need to. But you can see customer payments, but now you can see cash entries as well. So the cash module will show up under this bank deposit, which it didn't show before. So you could take all of your payments here and add and close. And now you have your total deposit, including the cash entry that you made before. So this is a feature, this will allow you to use cash entries a little bit more in the past, you would use some sort of cash sale, but you'd have to create a dummy customer if it's something you really didn't want to track the customer, or maybe it's something that came in all the time and it just didn't make sense to have a dummy customer for it. Now you don't have to. You could remove the hold here and release this deposit. Additionally, if we take a look at a vendor here, and we'll search for a tax vendor. This vendor is a tax agency. It's checked here as vendor is a tax agency, which enables this field, and all the configuration options you need to pay sales tax to this as a vendor, tax agency. So one of the new features in Acumatica is to be able to sync these as financial periods. Instead of choosing a month or half a month, you choose financial period here. And then you'll see there's a checkbox here to define the tax period by the end of the date of the financial period. It's automatically selected here. If we go over to payables and we go to prepare payments, Acumatic has now added the vendor class so you can categorize all the vendors. For example, maybe I want all my product vendors and my prepare payments here. And after I select my payment method, along with my cash account, I'll now see vendors that correspond to, in addition to all these other filters, the vendor class. So that's been added and that's new. So that's it. That's some of the financial features that have been added to 2021 R1. We also gave you a glimpse into the multi-company, where we've been, where we are today, and where the system is going for multi-company features cross transactions between multiple companies and many of the other new enhancements to the financial areas of Acumatica 2021 R1. So thanks so much for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and have a great day.